Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Often on the channel I find myself talking about high-end laptops like beefy gaming machines or sleek ultra portables. Well today we're going to the complete opposite end of the spectrum to talk about an entry-level laptop that was sent to me out of the blue by Chinese OEM Chewy. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, the laptop in question is the Chewy Lapbook Air, which is billed as an ultra portable like 14 inch machine with a price tag of just 430 US dollars. This puts it in the realm of some of the cheapest Windows laptops on the market of this display size. Chromebooks are also available for 400 bucks or less, but we'll just keep those over in the dunce corner for now because we're mostly interested in true Windows systems here. So what does 430 bucks get you? Well, if you're more familiar with top-end hardware, you might have heard of the CPU used in the Lapbook Air. It's the Intel Celeron N3450, an Apollo Lake SoC that uses Intel's Goldmont microarchitecture, which is designed for low-end power-efficient systems. It's a 6-watt SoC with four CPU cores and four threads, clocked up to 2.2 gigahertz with a 1.1 gigahertz base, plus Intel HD Graphics 500, which has 12 execution units clocked up to 700 megahertz. The Lapbook Air also packs 8 gig of DDR3 RAM and a 128 gig SSD, both of which are not bad inclusions at all in an entry level system, along with a 14.1 inch 1080p IPS LCD. It's all sounding pretty good so far and it gets even better when you take a look at the design. If you've seen entry level notebooks before, most of them pack a bland, plastic and generally terrible designs. They're really built just to contain the hardware and screen for the lowest possible cost. But that's not the case at all with the Lapbook Air, as what we're getting here would be acceptable even on a high-end system. The build here is fairly basic from a visual standpoint with nothing unique or standout in that regard. But the key feature here is the use of metal on all sides along with glass protecting the display. It's very rare to see this sort of quality materials used on a low-end machine, so Chewy is definitely targeting those that want a beautiful design for the lowest possible price. However, Chewy's marketing materials do exaggerate the dimensions of this laptop to the point where it's almost false advertising. It is a pretty slim machine at this price point, but it's nowhere near as slim as the product pictures make out. The images make it seem like the front end of the wedge design sits flush on your desk when in fact it's raised up by a bulge that Chewy has attempted to disguise through curves and other standard visual trickery. Later on, they claim this front section is just six millimeters thick, which I guess is technically correct if you don't count the bulge, but my measurements put the real thickness at more like 14 millimeters, which again, it's pretty good for an entry level system, but it would have been nice if Chewy presented a more realistic picture of the machine on their website. Though this isn't the only dodgy thing you can find on their website, in the performance section, they talk about the Glodmont architecture and how it performances faster, and later on they show images that clearly misrepresent the bezel size. Again, the bezels are quite reasonable for an entry-level product, but on Chewy's website they are shown to be much slimmer than in reality. Aside from that dodginess though, the rest of the design is filled with decent inclusions. There's two USB 3.0 ports, a mini HDMI port, a micro SD card slot and a 3.5mm headphone jack along with a proprietary power connector. I would prefer a full size SD card slot over micro SD but that's just a bit of a nitpick to be honest. The keyboard, it's great too with a surprisingly large travel distance and great clicky response to what I imagine definitely isn't the most expensive laptop keycaps you can buy. Each key is appropriately sized and I appreciate the large modifiers and full size arrow keys. Having page up, page down and so forth on the right of the enter and backspace keys is a little annoying but in general, the typing experience is great. It's even backlit and that's a feature that's often cut from budget systems. The trackpad, on the other hand, is pretty bad. It lacks precision for fine movement and feels quite sluggish to use, as if the polling rate isn't quite high enough for typical usage. I didn't expect every aspect of this laptop to be amazing, and it's clear the trackpad is one department that's received a few budget cuts. I wasn't expecting the display to be particularly amazing, though in some aspects this IPS panel did perform better than I anticipated, especially as it has a 1080p resolution. Brightness could be a bit better, though 266 nits isn't bad, and you do get a decent contrast ratio around 1150 to 1, and great viewing angles. 
Chewy have also done okay in terms of white balance and grayscale, leading to a 7100K temperature average and a 3.02 Delta E average. That's better than a lot more expensive notebooks. The problem comes with gamut coverage, and this is a standard area where manufacturers look to cut costs. Rather than producing 100% of the sRGB spectrum like you'd want from a decent display, the Lapbook Air hits just 67.4%, so colors look muted and undersaturated. If this was a high-end device, I would slam it a bit for poor color performance, but a lot of entry-level laptops suffer from the same gamma issues, so it's hardly a big problem in this class of device. So let's talk about performance, because the Lapbook Air with its Celeron N3450 isn't a speed demon by any means, or even a regular pace demon. Instead, the N3450 is pretty slow, and that's not at all surprising considering it uses Goldmont cores rather than Skylake or Kaby Lake. From the moment you power on and use this device for the first time, it's clear you won't be using this laptop for anything outside of light web browsing and document creation. It's here you'll really be reminded that despite that pretty exterior, the insides are definitely low end. I'm not going to focus on any one benchmark in great detail, but across the charts you'll see over the next few minutes, you'll see the N3450 compared to other mobile chips like the Cherry Trail X5Z8550, which uses Airmont cores from the generation before Goldsmont, along with more recent Skylake and Kaby Lake Core M, Core i3 and Core i5 CPUs. I have left out the 8th gen Kaby Lake refresh here because you won't find those chips in any product even remotely close in price to the Lapbook. The basic story here is the N3450 is very slow. It's similar in performance to the X5Z8550, but a long way behind most other CPUs, even Core M processors that have a lower TDP. Something like the Core M36Y30 is around twice as fast in single thread workloads and in the range of 45 to 60% faster when all cores are hit. And the M360Y30, it isn't exactly a fast CPU. It gets even worse looking at the Skylake Core i3-6100U, which is in the range of 2.1 to 2.2 times faster on a single core and 80 to 90% faster on all cores. Move up the chain to the i5-7200U and it gets dire for the N3450 as it gets bullied with up to 2.9 times the single core power and at least twice the multi-core power. And when we're talking about performance limited mobile chips, getting smashed in this way is not good news. Now you're probably thinking, why have I compared an entry level N3450 to something like the Core i5-7200U or Core i3-6100U when it's obvious these CPUs will be significantly faster? Well, the reason is simple. In the $400 to $500 price bracket where the Chewy Lapbook Air sits, you can buy laptops that include processors like this, which provide significantly more performance. This Dell Inspiron 13-inch convertible, for example, costs the same amount as the Lapbook Air, yet it features a Core i3-7100U, which would be a decent alternative if you want something portable but crave decent performance instead. If you care less about the form factor, Acer has a $350 15-inch notebook that gives you, once again, the Core i3-7100U. Or for $40 more, you can get this HP system with a Core i5-7200U. Now granted, these aren't equivalent systems. The Acer and Dell models I mentioned pack just 4 gigabytes of RAM, while the HP system doesn't include a 1080p display, and all use 1 terabyte hard drives instead of the 128 gig SSD in the Lapbook Air. But if you're looking at getting the best performance for your dollar, all three models provide a lot more performance even when hampered by a hard drive, and it's much easier to swap out a slow hard drive for an SSD than it is to swap out a slow CPU for something faster. And that's the real crux of the problem with the Lapbook Air. The Celeron N3450 isn't meant for this price point. It's more commonly found in sub $300 laptops where cost cutting in every aspect is commonplace. For $430, it's all well and good to have an excellent design, but not before you deliver a reasonable level of performance at the price. Now, I do like some things Chewy has attempted here. The SanDisk DF4128 SSD isn't going to blow you away with speed, but it does provide a noticeable upgrade over a hard drive, and there's even an accessible M.2 expansion slot for adding more storage in the future. Getting Intel Wi-Fi AC in this sort of system rather than a dirt cheap Wi-Fi N module is a nice bonus too, but some extra cash could have been put into the processor had Chewy opted for, say, 
four gig of RAM instead of eight gig because eight gig has little benefit over four gig with such a slow CPU. And again, RAM is easier to upgrade than a CPU. One thing I haven't talked about yet is the battery life. And with a 33.7 watt hour battery inside, you shouldn't expect anything amazing, even with the slow N3450. For video playback, I achieved around 5.5 hours, which isn't surprising for this sort of battery capacity. And this similar sort of performance carries over to the other benchmarks. You certainly won't get ultra portable class battery from this sort of system, but it's serviceable enough from an entry level device. At the end though, it's hard to recommend this system to most people because the performance simply isn't up to scratch for the asking price. This isn't a bad laptop at all. The design is fantastic, the keyboard is great, there's decent features for an entry-level laptop, and the display isn't awful by any stretch, but it should cost either $50 to $100 less or it should come with a faster processor. It's pretty much as simple as that. As it stands right now, I can only recommend the Lapbook Air to those who value design and portability above all else. Other buyers looking to spend around $450 should look into some of the systems from Dell, HP, and Acer I mentioned earlier, links to which you can find in the description below. But best wishes to Chewy though, as I think with a bit of refinement, a system like the Lapbook Air could be a standout option in the budget laptop market. It's just not there at the moment. But that's it for now. Back to the benchmark lab for me, and I'll see you next time.